welcome. I'm glad you could join me today. My name is Vera. I'm an instructor at Stonebridge Community Services, and that means my job is to keep you moving and motivated. Today, we're here at the Port Stanley Fitness Center with a program designed to help out our healthcare workers and PSWs. I'm a bit of a rotator cuff junkie. I see a lot of shoulder injuries. So today we're going to start with two light weights, something under three pounds. Water bottles are perfect for this. So let's start seated wherever you like in a chair or seated on your mat. And we're going to start with one hand coming straight up. Really important for shoulders that we can move our shoulder blades. So we're going to keep our elbows straight as we can and pull that shoulder straight back and ahead. And back and ahead. If it's too intense with the water bottles at any point, you can put them down. Rotator cuffs are teeny tiny little muscles, so if I were to give you a heavier weight, it might actually be easier because your bigger muscles, your prime movers, would kick in. But we don't want to target those, we want to target the little guys. So, really important that you work with something under three pounds. Other side, arm out, shoulders back. Nice and tall, even on the sitting bones. Shoulders come back and out. And two. Let me get a good position for that. Three. And three more. So trying to just get that movement by letting your shoulder blade retract and release. Two more. And last one. Perfect. Okay, from here, we're going to roll the shoulders back and we're going to let the arms come up to a better shoulder height and down. If you are dealing with a shoulder injury, the rule when we're working with weights is that if I were to drop water down your shoulder, when your arm's at the highest height, we, the water would be dripping down and not coming up. So we don't want to lift too high because that can be cranky on the shoulders. Let's go four more. Three more, you'll find that even though they are lightweights because they are small muscles, you will fatigue quickly. So again, if you need to put those bottles down, feel free to do that. Two more. And last one. From here, we're gonna let our arms come out just a teeny bit wider, but we can still easily see them in our periphery vision as we come down and up. Two and up. Waist is still cinched, so we still have a little bracing going on. So again, always that sensation that if somebody were to come up and give you a little push or poke your belly, that there'd be some sort of abdominal protection to protect our back. So just tightening up the abs. We're not sucking them in. We're not pushing them out. We're just waking them up. Two more. Last one. Perfect. Hold it here. Little circles. Three and two. And let's pause and re reverse. Three and two. Last one. Good job. From here, we're going to try to put our elbows way back, like we're trying to touch them together behind our back, and then press them away. And then squeeze, 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 and curl. And let's go four more, and press, and three more, and press, two more. And press. Very last one. And press. Okay, one arm can come down. Now, if you do have problems with overhead, you want to really be respectful of how high we're lifting the arms with this. So always work to pain, but never into pain or past pain. So you hit that cranky spot and you stop. So this, this exercise, I love it because it's all about raising our arms overhead, which is hard for some people. It's called drawing the sword. So we start by reaching down across into that sheath and raising up overhead. The body likes spiral diagonal movement a little bit better, so it likes crossing the body more than it likes just raising the arms to the side. So if overhead's hard for you, this one might be a good way to start to introduce that into your movement. Two more. And last one. Perfect. Let's go to the other side into the pocket, up we go, and control down. We're never in a hurry in either direction. We want to work that strength in all four of those muscles. Let's go three more, and two more, 
And very last one, perfect, okay, we're almost there. Let's put one hand on one shoulder. We're just gonna, we wanna watch the direction. So if I were to reach in the back seat, my shoulder's somewhere up here and my hand's back here. I hear people all the time saying, I just reached back to grab something and my shoulder popped. We want to get used to when we reach back that our whole body's reaching. That way our shoulder's not in such a compromised position. So imagine there's something way back there in the back seat. We're going to start the movement at the shoulder. We're going to look the direction we're reaching. And only if it's pain free, try to reach back and grab and come in and back. So shoulder's the first thing to move. And then if it's okay, the arm extends, come in. And back. And always keep the elbows a teeny bit soft, especially if you have vulnerable elbows, if you've been dealing with tendonitis, that extension can be hard on those elbows. Let's go two more. Reach. And one more. Perfect. Same thing on the other side. So just gonna put the hand on the shoulder. What we're, we've got to see what we're reaching for. Then the body's automatically turning, shoulders back, big reach into the back seat, and up. And two, and up, and three. Let's go two more. And last one, perfect. Okay, next one, we're just gonna put our hands right back behind our back. Wherever you can go. Some people will only be able to go to the back pocket. Some people will be able to go a little higher. And again, this movement originates from the shoulder. I could just lift my hand, but there wouldn't be a lot of shoulder movement. So again, get used to that shoulder coming back and then the hand following. Two and three and four and five. Perfect. Same thing on the other side. Just going to put the hand into the back pocket, shoulders back, see if you can lift it away, and up, and two, and three, and four, one more, and five, perfect. Okay, we're going to use one of the water bottles in a little bit, but for now you can just put them aside. We're going to go back to laying down, even though we're targeting shoulders, we're going to work the whole body. So let's start here by just uh, bringing our hands all the way overhead. So reach, reach, reach overhead. And now notice ribs and try to be heavy through the ribs. And then one hand can stay up and we'll let one hand come down. So we're reaching both directions. See how far you can reach like you're trying to grab your foot. And then way, way overhead. And same thing on the other side, just a big long reach. Let's do that one more time each time. And now this time as well as reaching, maybe push your thumb and your baby finger down into the mat. And the last one. Just stretching, getting those shoulders moving. Perfect, and down. And now we're gonna walk the feet up towards the hands, the hands down towards the feet. Again, if you're just starting out, just slap the floor, you'll have those arms to press into. If you're a little further along and you can, open your thumbs up. That's a lot better position for your posture and getting your shoulders to open up a little more. You should immediately feel the back of your shoulders going to the mat when you do that. And then when you're ready, we're just going to press into the hands, a little energy in the toes, squeeze, glutes, and up we go. Hold it there for four. So again, one of our best back exercises, but really squeezing glutes. And yeah. And squeeze glutes and lift and hold. Shoulders are wide, we're even on the back of our shoulders. Four and three and two. Almost there. Come on down. Let's do that again. Squeeze, lift, and hold. And a perfect road. We should be a straight line from our knees down to our shoulders. Hold it there for four. So we just so we want to avoid arching the back. Well, you always try to keep that straight spine. Three, two, and down. Nice job. Okay, from here, let's bring that one knee up towards the chest. And then we'll go 
Let's go um, with the opposite hand. So we're just going to touch that knee. And I'm going to give you a choice again here. If it hurt to reach your hand behind your back, you can just keep your hand here. If it's okay for you to put your hand behind your back, again, just a little more feedback. So now we want to brace our abs. So again, if I were to poke you, you'd feel like there's some resistance. And, and pressing that back into your hand or bottom ribs into the mat. And then try to keep that energy against the mat or against your hand as we tap down and up. Good job. And two. And it doesn't matter if you touch the floor, we just want to find that point, we call it the stabilization threshold, where you can move your arms and your legs without your back being compromised or changing. And if you want to make it harder, you can take the foot further away, whatever works for you. If you want to make it easier, the foot goes closer to the bottom. Perfect. Okay, other side. So if you can, hand behind the back, hand to the opposite hand to the opposite knee, and now cinch the waist, press your bottom rib either into the mat or against your hand as we start to move the leg and the arm overhead. So just go reach that leg. That's as long of a reach as you, as you can uh, achieve without feeling any change in your back. So we want to be sure that we can keep that back still and stable. One more. Well done. Okay, from here, let's bring both knees in, give it a little shake. And then we're going to bring our hands behind the head. Let's look down at our belly button. And then wide out through the elbows and gently push your head into your hands. And relax. So just opening up through the chest and shoulders. And now hold the $100 bill between your knees. So a little energy holding those knees together. And then from here, we're going to, on the right, bring our feet over to touch our hands and our hand to touch your foot. So just that little, it's called the tail whip. Just working those muscles between your ribs and your hips on your side. Three more. Two more. Last one. Perfect. Same thing on the other side. Let's widen it through the elbows first and just work that posture. A little low grade press with the head. And then on the other side, wave the tail. And two. And three. Two more. Hold that hundred dollar bill. Don't let it fall out. Knees are pressed together. Last one. Well done. And now let's let the heels come together and the knees be wide. And we're just going to squeeze the feet together and close and open. Two and open. Bottom ribs are still flat on the floor. Tailbone's down. Try not to roll your tailbone up when you lift your legs. Everything's nice and flat on the mat. Three more. Two more. Last one. Okay, now you have a choice. Your hands can either come back down here so you have something to press into the ground, or again, if it's okay to bring them behind your back, and it might again give you a little bit more feedback. And from here, we're going to reach legs out, but again, most important thing here is we're cinching the waist and we're pushing against the hands, so we're not letting the back arch. So we're going to reach and tuck and reach. So the higher you go towards the ceiling, the easier it's going to be to keep that back flat. Our, our goal is to find that place where it's hard, but your back's not changing. We want to challenge the body, but we don't want to compromise the body. So we want to find that point that the movement's a little bit hard, but you can do it without there being any stress on your back. Three more knees towards your shoulder. Press the legs together and zip them up when you come out. One more. Perfect. And now we're going to draw some circles with the knees. And you have a choice. Again, it's going to be a little easier if the knees are bent. It's going to be a little harder if the legs are straight. And now let's pause and reverse. Let's go three. And the back's not arching off your hands. Last one. Perfect. 
and down. Nice job. Lower one leg and then the other. Now we're going to roll over so that you're facing me. And from here, let's just bend our knees in right away. We'll get ready for the clams. Hips, belly button facing forward. Room for a little little uh, trail of ants to walk underneath you. Abs are nice and tight. And we're going to open the knees and close. Feet are glued together. See how far you can open without rolling your torso. Belly button and hips stay facing forward. Relax your neck. Four more. Three more. We're almost there. Two more. The last one. Well done. Stretch that leg right out. We're going to strengthen the top of the hips. Today we're going to externally rotate from the hip, so the knee and the toes turn up a bit, and we're just coming up and down. Two and three. So now we're going to get a little more on the outside of the quad. Four more. Three more. Two more. Last one. And now turning the knee down towards the floor. Leading with our heel as we come up. And two. So now you should feel a little more in the back of the legs. Let's go three more. Goal is to have the hip strong in every position so that we don't find a weak spot when we're moving. Legs three-dimensional. You need to be strong, especially when you're transferring heavy, heavy um, patients or loads. You don't want to be... If you're carrying things, you don't want to have a weak point. And then come on in. Good job. And then when you're ready, we're going to uh, straighten that bottom leg out, top leg. You decide either behind, a little easier, in front. If you're in front, try to open it up and stretch it out. And again, let's go a little baby toe down and lead with the heels. And two. And three. Relax the neck. And four. Four more. Three more. Two more. Last one. And now it's big toe knee towards the ceiling. One. And two. We're trying not to let that leg rest in between, but again, anytime you need to rest, feel free to take it. If one exercise is hard, just sit it out. We'll be on to something else in just a moment. Last one. Perfect. Hold it here. We're going to grab our water bottle now. Just want to work that external rotation of the shoulder. So the elbow's glued to your rib cage and we're just opening and closing. And two. And now you decide if that movement is cranky at all for your shoulders. You don't have to use a weight. If you're okay with it, then we can add on by adding a little hitchhiking where we're turning our thumb towards the back wall and straighten out and down. So it's up. Turn the thumb, straighten, and down. Turn, straighten, and down. So working those external rotators of the shoulders is probably the most important exercise if your shoulder's cranky, just that external rotation. Let's go four more. Three more. Two more. On this last one, we're going to bring the arm all the way up. And now look at those little creases in your elbows and turn them back towards the back wall and then down towards your, your toes. So we want that to rotation to be coming from here and not just the hand. I can turn my hand with very little shoulder rotation. So try to really rotate that shoulder within the joint. Last one. Perfect. And now we're going to have your fingers are facing me. We're going to come straight down to the mat and just up shoulder height. And two. And up. And three. And up. Three more. Two more. And very last one. Well done. Let's just flip over and do the other side. We started with the knees bent, hips 
facing forward. Feet are pinned together as we open the knees and close. And two. And just really trying to open as far as you can without rolling that torso. Let's go three more. Two more. Last one. Well done. We're going to reach that leg out. And now we're going to push the heel up, bring the knee down towards the floor. And we're just going to lift and lower. We're still trying to keep our hips facing forward. So try not to let your body roll with this. And we're lengthening that leg right out like we're trying to reach our heel to the whatever walls down below your feet. Three more. Get a little lift here, two more. Perfect. And now from our hip, we're going to turn that knee up towards the ceiling, trying to still keep the hip facing forward as we come up. And two, and three. Let's go three more. Relax the neck. Last one. Good job. Give that leg a little squeeze. We're going to reach the bottom leg out. Top leg, you decide in front or behind. Here in front, try to open it up. And again, we're going to just let the heel come up a teeny bit and lead with the heel as we lift and lower. Two. If you feel any pulling on the knee, then go back to that straight leg position and bend the knee just a little bit. We don't want any strain on your knee. Three more. Two more. Last one. And now we're going to lead with that big toe up. Oops, get that guy to come up. Sneak down on you. Three and four. Two more. Last one. That leg can relax. Elbow to the side. Water bottle. Your elbows are glued to the rib cage. It's your hinge as we open the door, which is our forearm. And uh, your choice whether you want to add that little bit of hitchhiking to it where the thumb turns to the back wall. But if you do that, make sure you straighten before you lower down. And three. And four. Two more. Five. Last one. Straighten the arm out so the water bottle is facing me. Arm all the way up, like it's sinking the socket. Look at the creases of your elbows and make sure you're rotating that whole shoulder as we turn the bottle. Elbow creases go down towards your knee and then up towards your ear. Down and up. Two more. Last one. And now the bottle's facing me and we're going to bring our hand at shoulder height and just down to the floor and up. Two and up. Three. If anything feels stressful at any time, drop the weight. Just work in that range of motion that feels okay for you. Two more. Very last one. Perfect. Bring the bottle in. From here, we're going to come right up to seated. And we're going to do a few stretches, and then we're going to shake it out. So let's start with the one arm coming out. Retract your shoulder. We're going to bring the hand up towards the ceiling. See how high you can reach. And then turn your little baby finger around and just see if you can touch your opposite shoulder blade. And here we're going to bring our hand either here or here, depending on what range of motion you have. If it's overhead, try to push your elbow into your hand. You should feel your ribs open up. And then a little bit of a double chin and gently press your head into your forearm. And again, just opening up that shoulder, pressing, opening up through the rib cage, and relax. Good job. Same thing on the other side. Going to pull, retract the shoulder blade. Arm comes up to wherever it's okay for you to go. Turn your little pinky around so you're trying to touch yourself, your opposite shoulder blade, and then either here or here for an assist. And now if you can, elbow into the hand. You should see that ribcage open up. The top of your head pushes into your forearm. The back of your head, looking down at the floor, into that hand that's behind your head. And just hold it there. And relax. And now I'm going to 
going to show you something that's a little bit fun. When, we, when we're cold, which it has been really cold lately, we shiver. And that's because it generates heat and it also um, it loosens muscles up and, and gets a little vibration going. So it's a really fun way to warm up if you're, if you're cold or if your joints just want to loosen them up. Or if you want to get some circulation going, I have a heart rate monitor. It actually gets your heart rate up too. So just shaking one arm out, and then let's shake the other arm out. And if, if your arms hurt, you might want to keep them low. If they're good, you might want to bring them a little higher, play with that range of motion. And you are actually stabilizing your joint when you do this. And if you want to add a little more fun to it, let's shake a foot up. Cats purr to create vibration. Vibration actually helps to um, stimulate muscle and bone growth. So that's a really cool thing. And let's go with the other leg shake. You should feel a little warmth generating in those arms. Perfect, we're almost there. And let's finish with some dexterity. Bunny rabbit, squirt gun. We need our hands. Okay, switch. Bunny rabbit, squirt gun. Bunny rabbit, squirt gun. Bunny rabbit, squirt gun. The bunny rabbit's okay. Bunny rabbit's okay. Bunny rabbit's okay. Last one, bunny rabbit's okay. Good job today. Let's just take our hands all the way back. We're just gonna stack them on top of each other like this, only behind our back. Pull the shoulders back and push, push, push. Hands into the back wall. Open up through that chest and shoulder. And now let's go down now towards the floor. See if you can push into the floor. And then a little double chin and let the ear fall to one shoulder. We always have something going on with our necks. There's always a lot of tension there. So try to just relax that, look like down at the floor. And same thing on the other side, up and over. Perfect, and all the way back to the center. And then let's bring the hands all the way on top of your head. Push your head into your hands, see if you can get a little taller. And then slide the hands behind your head. Look down at the floor again. Cream pie in the face, elbows wide. And relax, perfect. Let's bring our hands to the side. Just push down, roll the shoulders back, push down into the mat or the chair. And relax, and you can keep doing that. I just wanna say thank you again for being here. I've really enjoyed having some time with you and I hope that we'll be together soon. Take care, have a great week, stay healthy. Bye-bye.